and welcome back to my channel this was not going to be a video but this has turned out to be a much bigger job than i had anticipated this is cassie's land rover she was taking the land rover through a drive through and then it developed a coolant leak she was able to drive it back here and at first all i thought i needed to replace was the upper radiator hose and just for good measure i was going to replace the thermostat as well so these land rovers have this really funky thermostat that breaks off into three ways and this thermostat goes right down here, connects onto that hose down there. One direction comes this way into the water pump, and the other way goes up into the upper radiator hose. So this hose will be sitting here like this, and this one right here connects down to that thermostat. So we have two hoses right here, one here, one here, both connect into the top of the thermostat, and then this one connects down there. I think it's really silly to use these thermostats that are non-standard. Uh, what are we going to do if someone stops producing these? And I was just taking a look at one of the Land Rover Facebook groups the other day, and I saw a really neat product to eliminate this. This is a product from Inline Thermostats. And you get this neat housing. This is basically two thermostat housings from some other engine put together, and then you can put a standard thermostat in the center there. So you can... Go to the parts store, order any temperature thermostat that you want, put it inside of here. And the other benefit to this is you get to eliminate one of the hoses. This entire assembly right here, this is the way that the upper radiator hoses come for the Discovery 2s. And when you switch to this thermostat housing, you can eliminate this hose right here. So what you do, instead of this lower radiator hose splitting off in two other directions, this part comes with the kit you stick this in that lower hose and then you connect it to this hose here which goes to the water pump and then on your upper radiator hose you have your connection to the radiator right here and then you're going to eliminate this T and this hose and the thermostat will be connected between this hose from the radiator and this hose that goes to the water pump with this instead so we'll be eliminating this plastic piece the original hose also had a plastic bleeder right here, which was actually broken and leaking on this Land Rover. And you also get to eliminate the plastic thermostat. When I was undoing the original hoses from the thermostat that was in there, they were really, really loose on the plastic thermostat. And it's no wonder that they were leaking. The thermostat that was in there was all green from antifreeze leaking. And it's probably just better if you eliminate all the plastic parts in your coolant system. So taking things apart to install the new radiator hose and thermostat, it was discovered that the water pump was also leaking and the belt tensioner had bad bearings in it. So now I have a new belt tensioner, I have a new water pump. If we take a look at the old water pump, the bearing feels pretty good as far as having play in it. One thing that you don't want to happen on your Land Rover is this bearing can develop so much play that the impeller will actually start wearing into this back surface of the water pump and chewing it up on one side. This water pump isn't that bad, but if we spin it, you can hear, hear that bearing. It's not very smooth. I'll grab the new water pump for comparison. It doesn't make any noise when I spin it. And the same thing with the old belt tensioner. You can really hear that bearing and there's some play in that pulley. Again here's the new one for comparison. All you hear is my finger trying to push the pulley. Interestingly it looks like this new pulley is also made of aluminum whereas this original one was made of plastic. I just ordered this part from O'Reilly's. I didn't realize it was going to be upgraded like that but that's good. And if you're taking things apart this far, now's the time. Just put a new belt on. You don't want to have to deal with that later. It's so easy to get to when you have everything torn down this far. Just order one and put it on, no matter how long it's even been on there. I'll get everything back together, get this in place, and then I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll also show you on one of my other Land Rovers what the old setup looked like. Okay, this is the old setup. This does have the proper battery cover on it, but you can see the radiator hose comes along here. There's a bleeder 
to bleed air out of the system right there. The other Land Rover also had a bleeder right on the top of this T. This one does not for some reason. And then that hose comes down here, down to that white thermostat there, where it splits off and goes this direction, and also travels straight through to a hose that comes up beneath it. And this is what it looks like with the new inline thermostat. So this top hose doesn't come down here anymore. It just continues through this thermostat and then back into the engine. On this side, nothing sitting here because that lower hose is just attached straight to this hose over here that goes back to the engine, simplifying the system quite a lot. The other bonus is you can put a standard thermostat in here so you can get it in any temperature that you want. And if you need to change your vehicle for winter or summer thermostats, having it right up here is really easy to do. And you can order reusable thermostat gaskets from inline thermostats as well. I have to admit that this setup is not the best looking thing in the world, but it does clear the bonnet with plenty of room. I forgot to mention there is a plug on the bottom or you can order this with a plug on the top that you can either use for venting the cooling system or for putting in a thermostat to trigger an electric fan or putting in a temperature gauge. But remember, if you are going to use this for a switch or a temperature gauge, you will have to have two wire switches and temperatures because this unit is not grounded because it's only held to the engine by the hoses themselves. Otherwise, you will have to run a ground wire to this housing to ground it out if the ground is not included in your sensor. If anything does go wrong running this setup, I will have a follow-up video. That's going to be it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.